Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Keith. If you've been following along and watching our videos, you'll already know what a VFD is and how it works. Now we're ready to learn how to set up your VFD. Today we're working with the L510 VFD from Tico Westinghouse. It's a medium duty advanced micro drive that's ideal for compact applications. Common applications are pumps, fans, mixers and conveyors found in the food and beverage, HVAC and packaging industries. Before we get started, we recommend you hire a qualified professional and install your new drive. VFDs are sensitive electrical equipment that can be easily damaged if handled or installed incorrectly. A qualified professional can help ensure that no damage is caused. We recommend that you watch this video through once, then watch again and pause as needed as you go through the steps of programming your L510 VFD. Of course, there are many more settings you can use to match your VFD to your application. All of these can be found in the drive's instruction manual, which you can download on our website as seen here. We'll also make sure to add a link in the description for you. All right, let's dive in. Starting with the face of the VFD, Let's go over the different elements. This particular VFD should always be mounted in a clean, dry, and warm environment. This is a chassis mount drive. You'll notice that this drive doesn't have an enclosure, so make sure you get the appropriate enclosure for your application. If your VFD is just going in your shop, a simple vented enclosure will do. If you're mounting it outside and you're in Canada, you'll want a heated enclosure. Or if mounting in a dirty application, you'll want an enclosure with a filter. Up here at the top is where you'll be spending most of your time. This is the operator panel, also referred to as the keypad. This is where you'll configure settings and in cases without external controls, this is the control center for your motor. This spot here is a cover that opens to the RS-485 communication port. This is where you'll hook up your laptop if you intend to configure settings that way. You can also copy the settings from one drive to apply them to another. Now, looking at the front terminals where you'll connect any external controls, RA and RB are relay outputs. These terminals are used to operate another component that operates with the motor. For example, indicator lights or fans. The COM to S5 terminals are for the digital inputs. COM is the common or neutral that completes the circuit. S1 to S5 are the terminals where you'll connect buttons, switches, sensors, etc. And then 10V to AGND are analog inputs and outputs. 10V is the 10 volt DC power output for the connected device. AVI is the analog voltage input, ACI is the analog current input, AO is the analog output, and AGND is the ground. These analog inputs allow for the connection of external controls that create variations in speed as representative by a curve, like float sensors or a potentiometer. And finally, the connections at the bottom. L1, L2, and L3 are the connections to provide single or three phase power to the BFD. In single phase setups, L1 is the power input and L3 is the neutral. In three phase setups, L1, L2 and L3 are each connected to a phase. T1, T2 and T3 are the output lines that go to the motor. And these right here are the ground terminals. You'll find the full detailed wiring diagram in the quick start guide linked in the description. We'll make these power input connections to start up our VFD and start configuring. On the first power up, we have to do the keypad setup. Press mode until you see four digits separated by a dash like this. Press enter and use the up and down arrow keys to find 00-00, basic function. Today we'll set three parameters, which is everything you need to know for basic setup. Number one, motor rotation, either forwards or backwards. Number two, the main run source, either through the VFD or with a start stop switch. And number three, how you want to control the frequency, either with the arrows or dial. There are a ton of other parameters that you can set, but we'll do a separate video to show the setup for all the other parameters. Okay, so for the basic setup, we'll set the rotation of the motor. First, we'll navigate to 00-01, which is the motor rotation. Change the 00-00 to 00-01 using the up arrow. Long press enter. Set this parameter to zero for forward rotation or one for reverse rotation. We'll set ours to forward rotation and long press enter to save. Next, we'll look at how you want to control the motor. 
press the up arrow once. You should see 00-02. Long press enter. If you want to control your motor through your VFD, you'll want a value of zero. If you want to control the motor with a start stop switch, you'll use a value of one. Make your selection and long press enter. Next, we'll determine the frequency command source. Press the up arrow four times. You should see 00-05 and then long press enter. If you want to control the frequency through the keypad, keep the value at zero. If you want to use the VFD potentiometer, change the value to one. If you prefer to use an external potentiometer to adjust the frequency, change the value to two. I'm going to keep my value at zero. Make your selection and long press enter. Now let's head back to the group list and start inputting our motor data into the VFD. You'll find all this info on your motor nameplate. In some cases, the nameplate won't have all the information you're looking for. That's fine. Just use whatever information you have. You should still see 00-05 on your screen. Use the enter button to shift the position of the cursor and the arrow buttons to change the numbers. Navigate to 02-01 and long press enter. Here, we'll set the parameters for the motor current. Find the current rating on your motor nameplate, which might be indicated as amps, FLA, or current. Set the parameter and long press enter to save. The next parameter is motor rated speed under 02-03. Use the arrow to go to 02-03 and long press enter. Our motor is rated for 1800 RPM, so we'll set that and long press enter. Next is the motor rated voltage under 02-04. We'll hit the arrow up once and long press enter. Set that to 230 volts, then long press enter to save. We'll find the motor rated power under 02-05. Press the up arrow once and long press enter. This setting is rated at kilowatts. So set that to 0.8 and then long press enter. And finally, motor frequency under 02-06. Press the up arrow once and long press enter. We'll set that one to 60 hertz and long press enter to save. Now the VFD is set up for the specific motor. Now, let's take a look at the maximum and minimum frequency output. Setting this parameter will help to ensure that the motor isn't operated outside of its rated speed range. 00-12 is for the maximum frequency and 00-13 is for the minimum frequency. Use the enter button to move the cursor to get to 00-12 and long press enter. We'll go ahead and set your max frequency. Long press enter. Press the up arrow once and long enter again to set your minimum speed. We'll go ahead and set your max frequency. Long press enter. Press the up arrow once and long enter again to set your minimum speed. Your minimum frequency might be zero, or if you want your motor to always be running at a low speed, your 00-13 parameter will be higher than zero. I'm gonna set mine to zero and long press enter. We can also play with our acceleration and deceleration times. This is the amount of time it'll take to reach a certain speed or the amount of time it takes to stop the motor. Acceleration is under 00-14. Press the up arrow once and then long press enter. The units for this parameter are in seconds. And then we'll do the same for deceleration, which is under 00-15. Press the up arrow once, long press enter, and determine how many seconds you want it to take for the motor to stop. Make your selection and long press enter. Now we can run the motor, change the speeds to go faster or slower, and then stop the motor all from your VFD. Last but not least, let's talk about factory reset. Say you've decided to use your L510 variable frequency drive in a new application, or maybe you've just been playing with the settings so much that it's time to reset the whole thing. Use the enter button and arrows until we get to 13-08, and then long press enter. The number you want to enter here is based on the drive's frequency and voltage ratings and the power available to your building. You'll find the list of available options in the drive's instruction manual. We're going to be setting ours to 60 Hz and 208 volts. So we'll set this parameter to 1160 and then long press enter. Use the enter button to move the cursor position and the arrows to change the digit value. And there you have it. You've successfully set up your Tigo Westinghouse L510 VFD, and now you're ready to control your motor. If you have any issues with setting up your VFD, get in contact with our team of technical experts. Once we know more about your application, we'll walk you through your setup so you can get up and running as fast as possible. If you have anything to add, have any questions, or you have another suggestion for another topic for us to cover, leave us a comment below. I'm Keith with eMotors Direct, your source for industrial motors, 
gear reducers, controllers, and accessories across Canada. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.